WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And I am your host, Adam Messer. This is the Adam Messer Show. And for this second hour, we're going to flip the script. So the first hour, um, my, my friends Corey Brooks and Matt Lestalia uh, were on the show. And what we're going to do is uh, Matt Lestalia has a show called Burning, uh, Burn Your Boats. And so Matt's going to take over and we're going to flip the script. So uh, welcome back. <laughs> thanks, Matt. And thanks, Corey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Oh, I, I am so blessed and honored to be able to have this opportunity. Adam, you're such a gracious host. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, no, we, we dove in a little bit with Corey with uh, kind of how you started and how you got there. And uh, I love the fact, I mean, I don't love it. I think it's uh, really hilarious that your camera got stolen, but they left your tripod. <laughs> that had me rolling. But, um, <laughs> but with, uh, so you jump back in. When you're dealing with, uh, when you're dealing with clients, I know you and I have kind of had conversations about dealing with clients and, and what you're willing and not willing to accept. Um, and Adam, uh, Adam and I have had conversations about valuing yourself and your product. What did you, did you ever go through in the early stages when you were, char- when you were like getting ready to charge people for services, when you were questioning whether like your capabilities and, and what you should charge, like, did you ever go through that kind of mental battle? Um, let me see. I did. I, of course I did. And um, I'm still going through it because sometimes what um, people think, what you think of yourself is not uh, exactly the price that you want people to pay. You know what I'm saying? Because I right. see a lot of, a lot of photographers want to charge thousands of dollars for their pictures, but not everybody has that amount of money to pay for the pictures. So I always right. debate what, what you should charge people. But then I also got to be... Um, competitive because other photographers out there on the market, they get upset if you try to undercut them. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't even think about the, yeah, like rocking the boat of the community, um, you know, of other photographers. That's, that's, that's interesting. Um, actually on that, it's so crazy because, um, when I first started doing like charging people, I actually had a, a conversation with Corey about it. Uh, because I hadn't up until that point, I hadn't done it. And I did like a whole bunch of free events, uh, volunteer events for spotted. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was, I felt really comfortable. And when I would take uh, photos of the event, I would do a lot of portrait photos, you know, it was just good practice, you know, especially being in a high paced environment. It's like, boom, 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 boom. You know, you're going here. here. And um, so I, I remember we had that conversation. And so I originally started off like, I wouldn't say on the cheap, cheap end, but like I started off like a very reasonably priced and um, but over, I, I don't know, the first year or two, I raised my prices and I would do like like you said, Corey, uh, some folks, you know, it's not, you know, I would do a family photo session two hours for 50 bucks, you know, for people that I knew. And I felt like that was affordable, you know, it was, you know, not gouging somebody on prices or whatever. But if I had a client that was very needy up front and that they were very demanding up front, I would charge double. I would charge them more for that process. And it got rid of a lot of looky loose. I mean, like when I raised my prices, I got rid of a lot of people just, you know, bothering me. Cause if somebody starts off, the first question that they ask is about price, then they're, they're not going to be focusing on quality or, or, you know, content. Exactly. And those are the folks that, you know, if they start off, if they lead off, like how much are your, you know, services per hour? 250 with a two hour minimum. What? Yeah. You know, where I would normally charge 125 for like wedding or uh, other, you know, professional photography. But like for a family, you know, I would only charge 50 bucks for two hours for family photos, you know? And, And the reason why I would do that was because. I don't want to overcharge, you know, the little guy and I don't want to overcharge the, the big client either, but I want, you know, like if, if it's a professional company, I've had, uh, you know, I've had, and I'm sure Corey, you've had the same thing. I've had different famous people approach me and ask me to use my photos for free. 
And I'm like, no, you have campaign oh, money. Yeah, you have campaign money. You have this, you have that. You can pay me. You know, now if it's so, – go ahead, Corey. But you know, uh, Adam, uh, Savannah, they will take advantage of you. They're, they're trying oh, to God. use you and use you. Oh, yeah. Get your photos for free. And then they don't even want to pay your price sometimes. And then, you know, you have all that They don't even want to put your name on yeah. your photos. You know? Exactly. They want you to take your your copyright mark off or your you know your signature mark off, and I'm like no, you know so that's you know <laughs> I that's one of the things like um, Matt when you're talking about that like one of the, I think one of the first things that we talked about I said to you was get your money. Yeah, that's why I always tell exactly. people that ask me about doing freelance work get your money. Now that doesn't mean you charge you know Joe Blow from Kokomo the same price that you would charge big box xyz company you know but i feel like you know you have to kind of cater it and then some people i've had i've heard people say the argument well you should have a standard fee for everything bruh there's a reason why you go to you know certain places and get a dollar cheeseburger versus going to some other places and paying 15.95 that is absolutely right so absolutely right yeah, no, it's it all goes back to value. It all goes back to value creation, you know, and I, I love the expression that, you know, every ethical dollar earned is the byproduct of value creation. And so yeah, if you value, I value myself. I value the work that I do. And if you value it and you want you want to participate, um, whether I, it's I'm providing a service or a product or in the case of photography, both, um, then like you're you I, you're gonna you should want to pay me you know like that that should be the way that it goes and we know obviously that's that's not the way that it is but um oh well but yeah. you know on that same topic there matt um and Corey, i know you can talk a lot more than i can because I've, I've been out of the photography game for a couple of years but i've been doing freelance for a long time i, I get paid to write too and i can't tell you how many times i could have eaten you know, a, a wonderful steak meal on my exposure bucks. My Monopoly money exposure bucks. Yeah, I have I have many posts about exposure bucks. You can't eat or pay your bills with exposure bucks. But people think, like, I mean, like, no joke. They think that, oh, well, you know, I can I can drop your name and you'll be, you know, this, that, and other. I, I've never one time, not one time ever, have I had some relationship early on when I did all the stuff for free, I never had anything where the person that was like really pushing for me, you know, to do something with them for exposure. It never worked out. I never got exposure, you know? Uh, and I never, uh, I never understood why people think like, like you want me to do work and then you act like it's a favor that you're doing for me. Mm -hmm. I don't get that. Exactly. I don't get why. Savannah does the same thing. They, they say, Hey, you get good exposure with your with the pictures in my magazine but you know you can't pay bills with that no and and honestly with uh like so with the paper the newspaper i've been a freelance with them for a long time um they've paid me every article that i've ever done you know it's it's freelance money it's not a ton of money but they pay for it you know, and that's what I think an ethical company does is that they pay for their services. And don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stuff that I volunteer and there's a lot of services that I've given away for free because I wanted to donate my time and service to that organization. And Adam, speaking, speaking of volunteering, sometimes it's good to volunteer because actually when you volunteer, that would get you more business because people will actually say, hey, this guy helped me out. Let me talk to somebody so that these pictures and he can take them for them and they're bound for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree with that. So I just want to add that to uh, to the thing, Matt. Sorry, I just apparently something something stole my phone for the with the audio. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm Bluetooth. Um, yeah. No, I got, I caught uh, the tail end of that, but it's there's a. It's it's such a good point. It's it, it's almost like the same thing, but you how you go into it mentally seems to be really, really important. Like if you're going into it thinking like, Oh yeah, I'm going to pay you essentially for your services. I'm, I'm asking for you to do this for free and I'm going to pay you with exposure versus participating in a, in a voluntary event, you know, where you're, you're 
donating, you're giving charity to this to support it. It's they're similar, but it's very different types of things because one is like falsely giving you the. I'll tell you, um, I'll, I'll tell you how that difference is. So that exact thing, Matt. Um, a and I know quite a few of the, and so does Corey. We know quite a few of the people that um, do. They're they're the directors and leaders of uh, charitable organizations around town. And the folks that are the ones trying to get you to do work for exposure are not doing charitable work. They're trying to do something to promote themselves. Whereas someone who's, you know, a charitable director or a director of a charity or whatever, they're doing it with the goal in mind to help the folks that the charity benefits. So when they, you know, when they gather, because they have to do the same kind of thing, they have to gather these resources you know, mm-hmm. they have to get all these different things. They do event planning and event planning and event planning because that's their bread and butter for, you know, raising funds. And, but, you know, when you, when they ask you, and I've been approached by different people asking me to volunteer my services, but they don't ever do it like, oh, this is going to benefit you by doing this. You know, what they're saying is this is going to benefit our families in need or these folks in need. I understand that you do this kind of service, you know, would you be willing to donate a couple of hours of your time or whatever, you know, as part, you know, to help our organization out. Whereas someone who's trying to, you know, do the exposure bucks, (laughs) they're coming to you like saying, Hey, Matt, (laughs) you know, if you did this for me, it's going to, it's going to be really good for you. And I'm doing you a favor by even asking you. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> no, I'm with you. I was, yeah, I wasn't trying to, to align those. I was, I was. No, no, no. I was just talking about like an jack. example of exactly how, what yeah. you're talking about. Uh, let me do the station ID real quick. Um, everybody, you're listening to WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. This is uh, this is Matt Lestalia's hour with uh, burning your boats. Um, burn your boats. I keep saying it wrong. Man. I keep wanting to say burning your boats, like, like burn them down. <laughs> and, uh, so we're flipping the too. script today. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, take it, take it away, Matt. Yeah. So when for, for both of you guys, I mean, cause you both deal with, with kind of the more artistic side of, of the, of the world and, and of the side of commerce and everything. How do you end up finding your, your footing with people like when you're so outside of the finances we're talking we had talked about a little bit before and and uh the mentality that it takes to to work with a client um what are what are some of the ways that you find that common ground Corey? when you're like when you're working with somebody and you have like kind of a difficult client you're trying to find that way to to smooth out the rest of the the process so you're not you know pulling your own hair out so to speak (laughs) Uh, well, that, to be completely honest, I've only had so far one client that uh, was difficult. And when I say difficult, um, she asked me to take pictures of a garden for, garden for her mother. And her mother lived in a private residence out in the middle of nowhere, uh, uh, right off of 95 with a big pond in the yard. And she made a garden look like something from home to garden. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to go. I wanted to go to visit her the first day just to see. Um, what was the yard about? And when I went there, I t- come to find out her grandmother actually has Alzheimer's. Oh, so wow. I was I was nervous anyway going in through the gate because a big black man coming in the neighborhood. And no <laughs> me, but I wasn't sure <laughs> what to expect. And then I talked to her mom extensively that day, and I was supposed to be coming back, and she was supposed to call me to come back. She never called me, but I called her and said, "Hey, when you expect me to uh, want to come out there and take pictures of the yard?" She completely forgot. It was like it was a totally new conversation. Oh, no. Yes. And the girl had already paid me, but then she called me and said, well, my mom said you never came out, you never called me. I mean, you never called her, and you never took pictures. And I want my money back. I said, I, said, I have no problem giving you money back. I said, but I called your mom. And I, you know, I told her the whole spiel. I told mm-hmm. your mom, you know, your mom's kind of forgetful, but um, I don't think I want to really take the pictures anymore because... You know, I just can't. I can't deal with that kind of situation. You know, yeah. of course, I gave I gave her money back, but I've never had to deal with a situation like that before, where one person has an issue that I can't really, I can't handle. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
Yeah, so that's good. I mean, if that that's the if that is such a unique situation, you know, uh, a problem like one that you're not going to be dealing with on a regular basis. And so, outside of that, people have been mostly good, you know, as far as clientele and showing up in their expectations. Nothing, nothing bad on the flip side when you're when you're giving prints back. No, not not anything. Well, I had a couple of clients that didn't know how to use my website, or they try to print, they try to download the pictures to their phone. And right. then go to wall go to Walmart and print them. And you know, if you download them to your phone, they're not going to print like once you take them to Walmart. They don't even post so, right for uh, Facebook and stuff either. They, oh no, never. And then I said, and they came to me complaining, saying, "Hey, this is the kind of pictures I got." I said, "Look," I said, and I printed them. I printed some eight by tens for my uh, laptop, and I said, "These exact pictures this is what they're supposed to look like." I said, "You can't print them off of your phone," and people don't seem to understand that. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. That's true. What a what part what what is it that about photography that like drew you to it? What was in what part of the process is it that that kind of keeps you coming back? Oh wow, well, um what keeps me coming back is the beauty of the photos and nature and actually um uh, when I'm doing events the camaraderie of the people. Right. Especially when I do running events, because I, I know you run, Matt. Yeah. And, um, and I hear uh, people always say, oh, man, I'd be so tired until I see you with that camera. I see your smiling face, and that really perks me up. I really appreciate that. And that makes me feel good. No, and it's true. As as a participant in a run that you've you've taken photographs for, I, it was exactly that. It's, 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 it's something special, for sure. And so I definitely appreciate that from the from the runner's side. Um, but when I, I do have to, I do have to tell you, I don't think I told Adam before, but at one time when I was initially starting out, I was going to quit. Really? Right. And that's because a um, photographer and Matt, and Adam knows who, who they are. I'm not going to say their names. <laughs> and I had, I had a lot of respect for them. And I, and I was just starting out and I asked them questions. And they told me, oh, your pictures are ugly. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to do this. And that made me just want to quit. Mm. Wow. <clears throat> and thank God um, I was too bullheaded and yeah. I, continued, I continued to learn. And shoot, I'm proving that person wrong right now. Absolutely. What uh, what what was it that, that kept you? Like, yeah, you were bullheaded, but like, I mean, and you were down. Was, was there an aspect of like, I'm going to show them or... Did that kind of get just brushed to the side? You're like, no, I just really want to do this. Like, kind of, how did you overcome that? Uh, that comment that they made to me drove me to um, learn more, do better, so I can eventually surpass them. So that so became your fuel. Exactly. That's amazing. That is something incredible. What about that? Me to, to grow, I'm sorry, it helps me to grow every day. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. It's interesting that, and again, it goes back to that that concept of like, what do you do with it? You know, stuff's going to happen. the The negative aspects. There are events in your life that are going to happen that are not um, desirable. And what 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 can we do with it? I wonder what would have happened had he not said that. You know, like how much fuel and energy would you have had going in? Um, but so it's it's kind of amazing. It's there's a certain level of gratitude that you can have for. Uh, a not so kind statement like that. <laughs> yeah, that was my driving force. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Adam, same thing with you and the books and, and, and all of everything that you're doing. Like I, I love, I feel like, <laughs> uh, you've gone into, what is it? Uh, like the Pharrell Usher Eminem side of like authorship. You're like, okay, cool. Like I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna write, in everything, I'm going to write my own books, but I, I want to foster the, the growth and the development of others. What, uh, what, what was the inspiration for you, like shifting a focus more recently into Valhalla and everything? Um, and, and just generally for your motivation to help other authors I, support them. Can I circle back around uh, to what Corey was saying for a second though? Um, and now oh, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and, and I'm not tooting my own horn here. Okay. But Corey is a really good photographer. And when I say good, I mean like good. 
Okay. Yeah, he's really good. He's, he's <laughs> you're really you're really a great photographer because you I have. I appreciate that, but <laughs> no, no, I know you're humble and I know you're gonna try to deflect it, but I'm, I'm serious. When I and I have an artistic eye as well, and I feel like I'm a good photographer. Now I got burnt out dealing with um, folks with the photography, and I wanted to focus more on my writing, so I stepped back from it. But I can tell you, and and this is just kind of you know crazy, but Corey and I have both had haters because they were jealous of the quality of work that we were doing. They were like, oh. And the way I look at it was this. I never took what somebody was hating on me for as a uh, an issue because if I wasn't doing something that was noticeable, I wouldn't have any haters at all. If I was just average, run of the mill, nobody would ever, you know, critique. I, I love. I've always loved the expression that haters always swing up. Yeah, haters. Always, and, I've and, never seen a hater doing better than me. That's that's know? exactly it. And so you know, the folks like uh, the particular person that you know made a comment, um, a negative comment to Corey. I had a similar issue with uh, a different person, and. You know, so I, I really don't want to go into the particulars of it, but you know, things happen and jealous, jealousy and jealous people and envious people, you know, they've, they've just, they're not doing what you want to do or they're not doing what you're doing or they, you know, they feel like, oh, well, I should be this or I should be that. I do this and I do that. And why are they getting the attention? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, just stay in your lane. You know what I mean? So I just want to kind of circle back to that because, uh, you know, you, y'all, when you get a chance, check out Corey's uh, nature photography, and then you know, there's all there's all kinds of stuff. But I especially love your, I especially love your uh, bird photography, uh, Corey. So, but um, yeah. Thank you, bud. <laughs> hey, um, so he, going back to your question, Matt, um, when I started the Savannah Quill in 2016. I wanted to publish, I wanted to self-publish, and I started the Savannah Quill. I actually published a magazine in 2017. Um, and with doing the freelance writing, doing the published uh, journalism and stuff like that, uh, my background in academics and my business leadership, doing a lot of writing that way, um, the, the idea was always to publish, right? So the first couple of years or so, I did a convention, did another convention, um, did some meet and greets. And then this last year we did the Savannah authors expo as a way to, um, do events for authors, you know, ind- independent authors in the community. And then, you know, starting, I did the, started the books and brews, uh, partnering with Southbound Brewing Company to, uh, raise funds to benefit the Ronald McDonald charities of the coastal empire. And that was, you know, nonprofit, um, charitable organization, uh, event. So those were always, you know, events to, um, you know, to raise funds or awareness. Um, So so like the Savannah Quill, you know, we connect writers and readers to promote literacy. That mission has not changed. None of that's changed. What I wanted to do, though, and about a year or so ago, I was like, okay, well, I want to be able to, you know, morally separate the two, right? So I wanted to be able to say, okay, I can still do my nonprofit stuff. And I can still do my charitable stuff without feeling compelled to try to sell books. And then I can do my book selling stuff without feeling compelled to try to raise funds for a charity. Right. And it's, it's just one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, separating business from personal, you know, separating um, profit from for profit uh, from nonprofit, you know, so each, each aspect, uh, you know, that I've taken is a step forward. The the decision to make a, a small publishing imprint name and a brand was so that I could take that next step forward with publishing. And as an editor, what I wanted to do was I wanted to compile a, a group of, I wanted to gather up a group of like really awesome authors that I enjoyed reading, and. I wanted to be able to put them all together with a theme of a book and, you know, and, and cut my chops as an editor um, with, you know, this publishing. And it's also a way that I can migrate because I do the, I do the poetry, 
you know, I've got a couple of kids books that I've done and I do, you know, sci-fi and horror. Well, I wanted to separate those. I want to keep them, you know, kind of like, cause it, it, it's all writing, it's all publishing or whatever, but I wanted to, to be able to say, okay, well, the folks that like poetry, this is where you go. If you like my poetry, the folks that like my children's books, this is where you go. If you like my children's books, the poet, you know, the folks that like my fiction stuff, this is where you go for my fiction stuff. Right. Because, you know, and it, being a creative person, we create, we do things, you know, but folks that, um, that follow along, sometimes they get confused. They're like, well, I thought you were just on this. I thought you were just on that. I thought you were, <laughs> you know, and I've had people ask me like, what, what do you do? I'm like, well, I do the things that I like to win. I do the things I enjoy doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I just picked up, a, uh, you know, I've been out of the, the photography stuff for a couple of years. I just uh, picked up a, a, an inexpensive camera with some good glass, you know, so I could take photos for my son for his graduation, you know, because I know how to take photos. I know how to take good, you know, quality photos. And I wanted to be able to do that, but I didn't, you know, I didn't have $1,500 to buy, you know, a camera body or, or $5,000 to buy a camera body, you know? So I got it at a, a really nice pawn shop and I, you know, bought a nice inexpensive camera and I was able to take some good, you know, good photos. It's just one of those things. Like you, you pick up these tools, you get, a, you know, you, 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 you step doing, you know, you start doing the things or whatever, but in the publishing side of it, I wanted to separate it. I want to keep, you know, my charitable stuff um, separated from my for-profit stuff. And I, I didn't want, I wanted to try to kind of simplify everything. Just like changing the name of the show from the Muses, Memoirs, and More to the Adam mm-hmm. Messer Show. You know, we talked a, a lot last year about, you know, branding and simplifying. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I, I, one, I think one of the most common names of any show out there is like the person's name show. You know, the yeah. Johnny Carson show, the Carol Burnett show, you know, uh, <laughs> the Oprah Winfrey show, you know, <laughs> the Adam Messer show. <laughs> it, it's so simple and straightforward, but it's it's a way to keep it single, separated and simple, you know, right. so I'm not confusing Focus. people. Yeah. Sure. Ownership. Yeah. Ownership. That's another that's another good one. Um, let me do the station IDs real quick, guys, and then we'll be back in uh, about two minutes. The Bulk Public Library System offers local residents access to hundreds of thousands of movies, television programs, albums, audiobooks, ebooks, and digital comic books for free on your streaming television and mobile devices through the Hoopla app. Supported devices include Roku, Fire, Apple TV, iPhone, and Android, among others. The selection is vast. All you'll need is your library card. Find the Hoopla app on your device and more information at liveoakpl.org. Now you have a chance to support both Savannah Independent Artists and WRUU during this shelter-in-place order to stop the spread of COVID-19. Creatives in Need is a group of independent artists hosted by the Roots Up Gallery, which is collaborating with WRUU during this shelter-in-place to offer an online art gallery at www.rootsupgallery.com. For every work of art sold at this online gallery, the artists receive 80% from the sales and 20% goes to WRUU and its programs like Art on the Air. Interested listeners can go to www.rootsupgallery.com to start shopping today. WRUU 107.5 FM is a new and different listener-supported and all-volunteer community radio station for Savannah. Our diverse broadcast and web programming is supported by generous listeners who value our passion and spunk. We are independent of other media and receive no government or large corporate support. People like you are the largest and most important source of our funding. Go to WRUU.org to find out how you can make a one-time or monthly contribution. Thank you. All right. Welcome back, everybody. And this is the Adam Messer Show, and we have flipped the script. Matt Lestalia is hosting this hour um, with his Burn Your Boats show. So, uh, Matt, while we were out, um, I just want to tell you all, um, we got uh, some listener uh, feedback from Terry and Darlene Dremel. It says, the three of you are a great mix. This is like hanging out in a virtual coffee shop with you guys. 
<laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly oh, what it is. I feel like we're, wherever, whenever we get together. <laughs> I'm telling you, yeah, I, I, you know, I really appreciate uh, y'all uh, messaging us. Um, you know, it's so crazy uh, doing the radio show. It, it's so nice to have feedback from uh, folks and tar- uh, Darlene and Terry are um, you know, some of our regular listeners here. So, um, Matt, you are uh, hosting this uh, the second hour with the Burn Your Boats, and uh, so take it away, bro. Awesome, thank you. They're good to be back again with everyone and with uh, the, two of the the best guests slash hosts that that a that a host could ask for. Um, so one of the things that I think is is fairly consistent, one for all of us here, but also for anybody that happens to be listening, is uh, is the idea of time management and and focus. How do you focus your energy and and where do you where do you place your time and everything? And and so I'm just curious because. Um, it's not a question I would ask anyone. It's a question I ask, but I feel like have got a decent handle, you know? So I don't know. We all struggle from time to time, but I know you're moving around a lot, bouncing around from spot to spot, you know, just taking these photos and, uh, and booking gigs. Like obviously before all this went down, um, how, how did you, how did you strike that balance uh, between working full time and then doing photography and uh, somehow keeping your amazing wife happy. Uh, don't keep your wife happy. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's, it's, it's still a balance because um, as far as time management is concerned, as you know, in Savannah, um, the biggest events are in the spring and in the fall. So in the spring and fall, really, I have no time. Because right. uh, I try to I try to only do the events that are on the weekend, mm-hmm. but most events happen at six o'clock. So my full time job I get over at four, and then I run to the next event by six. So, and then hopefully I see my wife sometime at night. And <laughs> she, she's not always happy about that. So time management has been difficult. <laughs> has been difficult. So what do you we got a little slowdown right now. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. saying I bet she's she's not too mad about COVID nineteen then. <laughs> uh, she's not mad about the time management, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and see and then you know, a lot of times in Savannah, a lot of events can be on the same night. Oh yeah. Especially the charity the charity type of event. And so uh-huh. what I do if I got events on the same night, I find outstanding people like Adam that have the same thought process I do. You try to get them or somebody to hire somebody to take pictures from. Yeah, that's I love that. Um, and you know, and there's never a, a, a dull moment in Savannah when it comes to. And, and right now is an exception, but there's it, whatever you are into. If you like art, if you like music, if you like dancing, you know, any kind of. I mean, there, there's there's all kinds of stuff out there that you can do. And people always say, "Oh, there's not that whole." There's you know, folks that come there like there's not a lot to do in Savannah. I'm like, yes, there is. It's like so much to do. You can't even do it all. It's crazy. It's crazy to me. I, I hear that from soldiers from uh, in Stewart all the time. Like, oh my gosh, I hate Fort Stewart. I hate Georgia. I'm like, no, you probably hate your unit. They're like, no, there's nothing to do out here. And I, and I, I give them that kind of sideways, you know, father look. That's like. Really, really, son. Like, have you? Are you opposed to driving for more than thirty minutes? Because if you're not, then there's limitless things for you to do, from Hilton Head Island down to Jekyll Island. I mean, everything and, and beyond. You know, but Savannah is just gorgeous. I was just having this conversation about like the amazing architecture mm-hmm. and and how it got lost. Like, not specifically in Savannah, but in the United States. Like, you think about Europe and all the people that wanted that have traveled there over centuries to see the architecture. And we we have that in Savannah. And But then there's a modern push to, like, to go more economical and, you know, streamline and cookie cut. Uh, and I just – I love – that's one of the things that I've loved. One of the top things that I loved about moving to this area was – being able to go in Savannah and see these historic churches and all the different architectures, just gorgeous. It's a gorgeous city. Mm-hmm. And I for agree. a photographer, it's good, good grief. Like, all right. Well, uh, Savannah, Savannah's a photographer's dream. That's for sure. Oh yeah. We, we actually went down, um, 
a couple of blocks down from here. What what's that uh, square called, Bass? Madison Square. Yeah, we were down on Madison Square taking uh, some senior photos for him, and uh, yeah, it's just it's so beautiful. I mean, like uh, perfect weather right now. This time of the year is just you know, except for allergy season, <laughs> but yeah, it's just perfect weather. Um, Matt, did you want me to answer that one too, or no? Yeah, yeah, please. I, I, well, I just want to share this. I, uh, a friend of mine, um, Rebecca um, Hamrick, she does this thing called a bullet journal, a bujo, and um, so it's kind of strange, but when I worked at the college, I used to, uh, like I said, I metric everything. I created this uh, little guideline um like a little 90 day action planner um and that's what i used to use was this little 90 day action planner and um so this this it was just a way to focus on my goals and time management and i would like you know have everything managed down to the you know the minutes or whatever um at least for my work day and then you know i would try to do the same thing for like my after work activities for you know my second job or whatever for you know writing or photography or whatever but um i've been trying I, I i've actually tried and failed doing the bullet journal like three or four times now and uh i started doing it again friday because i was like you know i'm gonna give this another shot because i know i know it works for people and it you know i've only been doing it for a couple of days but i feel like it's helping me um because the thing with the, the bullet journal is you write down tasks that you need to do and you write down goals and that kind of thing and whatever and then when you go from like day to day or week to week or month to month and let's just say an activity didn't get done right then you have to you you actually have to question yourself you have to say okay is this is this activity worth doing and it's a way to prioritize your time because like some of the stuff that you know i think i should be doing you know, when I write it down, like, like, for example, if I have like an overwhelming day and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got so much to do. And then I write it down. I'm like, okay, well, I've got 10 things I got to get done today. Right. But in my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, I've got so much to do. But then I started actually writing it out. Then I could, you know, get those little victories right off the bat. Cause I couldn't like, oh, well, okay. I needed to write in my bujo, my, my, my bullet journal. Uh, I'm doing that. So I can check that one off. Yep. You know, or I need to pray. I can check that one off uh, as soon as I pray or meditate or whatever. And so I've been using that like that. So that's a, a kind of a new tool for me. Like I said, I've tried it three or four times and failed. Um, but I think going back to priorities and making those priorities, like the ones that you, you, you know, you take the action and you, you spend your time doing, um, that's how I've been trying to manage my time. And, you know, so far it's been working. One of the, like, I'll give it an example. I'm a little heavier than I want to be right now. So one of the things I've been doing is I've been exercising again, you know, so I've been trying to, you know, look at like, what am I eating? And th so that's a priority. I've just kind of shifted my, you know, thinking about what is important to me and what I do, do I need to focus on? Cause you can't focus on everything a hundred percent of the time, a hundred percent of the things you just can't, you know, if you got one area that you're hyper-focused on, you're going to have another area that you're hyper not focused on. Yes. So that's what I've been trying to do. No, I love I love the idea of bandwidth of like of, of relating our brains to having a certain amount of bandwidth that we only have so much. You know, there there are endless amount of things that we could put our focus and our prioritization on, um, but we can't we can't choose all of them. You know, and so and the more things that you bring on, the less efficient, the less. Uh, amount you're going to actually get done on anything is going to be and so you know uh talking about that too matt um pat flynn has uh, a whole series of books or whatever but um in one of the books he talks about like the 80 percent rule or whatever where mm -hmm. you skill stack so you don't have to you know be a hundred percent you know with the mastery of that skill in order to be good you know the good to great level but right. if you focus only on one aspect of something and where you want to be 100%, you know, have that mastered 100%, but you lack other supporting skills, even if you're 100% with that, and he's not necessarily saying this, but this is what I gather from it. Even if you're 100% with that, you know, um, you're not going to be good to great because you lack 
supporting skill sets. You don't have other talents. And I'll give you a good example of what I think this relates to. And I call it tech head because you get some people that have like some kind of technical skill and they're very good at that one technical skill, but they have no people skills. They can't relate and they can't communicate with other people, right? But they're really good at this one thing. I mean, like they're the, they're the expert. But as far as communicating or relating that or being able to, you know, foster a community of a team or anything like that, they just don't have that because they they hyper focus on one area where they let other areas lack and, you know, just kind of fall to the, the sideline. Right. No, it's a it's a great point. Actually, I just ran into and it's you never know, like with a with a skill stacking, you never know where it's going to overlap. And so that's why I love the idea of continuing to pursue. Don't just pursue the things that you're interested in, but like pursue them to a point of excellence. I mean, not not in not perfection. Yeah. Right. And so because I did that with with podcasting and I'm, I'm doing it and it's going well. And and so I never once would have considered the possibility of that doing anything other than continuing my own proficiency at podcasting for myself. Now I'm working for this private company and they're aware of my podcasting background and they're like, hey, do you think a podcast would work well for X, Y and Z for our company and our business? And I was like. I yes. Think, I think that it can. Yes. Can. That's a like, yes. <laughs> right, exactly. And I'm so the guy for you, right? <laughs> it's like, well, I, well, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, it's, an, it's another way to make yourself invaluable inside of the business. Um, it's something that it's, I, I'm uniquely blessed that the company was able to, to on their own, see the value in it, identify the fact that I was their subject matter expert in that realm and then ask me to create a presentation for them on how we could leverage a podcast for the business. And that would have, I'm, I'm there to be a part of the sales team. This is, you know, like this is way more on the marketing side of things, but they're starting, they're just starting to see the, the benefits of the marketing mixed in with the sales and all of that. And so I think it's a beautiful opportunity and it's one that would not have existed if I didn't skill stack, just like you were talking about. Yeah. And I mean, look, uh, when you first started doing it, Corey, uh, it was the main reason why Corey introduced us, <laughs> right, Corey? You're like, he, uh, Matt kept asking you to uh, interview, and you're like, you need to talk to this other guy. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. So, was, you know, just a, telling people about what you're doing. Tactics. Well, talk no, even what I'm saying is, like, even telling somebody about what you were wanting to do. You know, you got a guy like Corey that's, like, got, you know, a resource, and he's like, hey, wait a minute. Let me marry these two together. Let me put these two ideas together. Boom, boom, boom. And here we are today, you know, a year and a half later or so, <laughs> having this I conversation. Don't mind, I don't mind being the middle man. No, and that's I feel so blessed about my relationship with you, Corey, because you really have stepped out on a limb. You and, and, and Adam have been two of the biggest, like, active supporters of me in, in my endeavors. Of Like, you will go out of your way, like, hey, I found this person. Uh, that I think would love to be on the show. And they, they every single time, they follow through. Every single time. Uh, that's like, so crazy. Doug, oh, my gosh. That was such an amazing interview with him and his wife. Oh, it was incredible. And I just, I, I'm so grateful to the both of you. Oh, no, no. It's not, it, it's, no, it's no problem, man. I love it. I mean, like, I, I'm just saying how uh, serendipity, you know, I guess, like, I think going back to that positivity you know, when you're doing something good and you, you know, we have, we, all three of us have an abundance mindset. That doesn't mean we don't have negative thoughts, but we all have an of abundance course. mindset. Like, you know what? Let me, you know what? I might not be the person that can help you, but I can get you in touch with someone I think can get you on the right path. So, right. um, let me do the station ID real quick and we'll have about 10 minutes left after that. Uh, everybody you're listening to WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. This is the Adam Messer Show. We flip the script. Um, we have Matt LaStalia hosting this hour of the show, uh, with his burn your boats. And, uh, he's, so he's, he's interviewing, uh, Corey Brooks and myself, Adam Messer. So yeah, Matt, um, Take it away, man. You got we got about another ten minutes or so. Uh, of the show. Minutes. This is perfect. We can we can we can wrap this thing up nice and beautifully. Then, so the way that I usually like to wrap things up on my show um, when I'm when I have a guest on for interviews is I like to talk about about meaning and purpose and 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 you know what do you when you're on your deathbed and you look back and you reflect back on your life, 
what do you want to be able to say? Like, what do you want to, and, and this doesn't have to go specifically back to photography or to those things, but I'm sure that it kind of wraps up in it, but just like, what do you want to feel like you've accomplished and what do you want to feel like you've, you've contributed? How do you measure your success? Um, you want me to answer first? Uh, Matt? Get it, Corey, please. Oh man, that is a good question. Um, for me, Oh, I, I just want people to actually, on my deathbed, I want to make sure there's a lot of blooms and a lot of partying going on. And I want people to know that um, I just loved everybody. I love nature, and hopefully my photos will live on longer than I will. Oh, I know they will. I know they will. They're absolutely incredible. And and, and the one thing that I don't know, I mean, maybe you, you've caught on to this because of Adam and, and what, he was, what he did uh, with your... I don't. I wouldn't know if you call it guidance, but your inspiration is, is is the amount that you've inspired people. I wonder how many people out there have started taking photos, um, and have gotten better. Um, like people like Terrence that we've worked with, you know, um, through communicating with you, and and it's just it's a beautiful thing. You don't know. It's so hard to put a number on the number of lives that you changed, but I I could see it with Adam and uh, you know with the photography specifically. But then, um, yeah, man, you, you're something special, and we really appreciate it. Oh yeah, uh, I, I agree. You, I think awesome, I, tell you. I think that's a beautiful uh, sentiment, Corey. I really do. You guys are awesome. And uh, so, Adam, so I know that we've we've had this before, but I know that things shift over time. You know, looking back um, on all of your different endeavors, uh, your epitaph. <laughs> <laughs> what do we? <laughs> I. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I was born. I grew up. Now I'm here. <laughs> That was literally the first way that we started our first interview ever. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that line. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things. I, I I feel the same way. I just, I I want to give and be able to give other people. Um, and uh, I have a true feeling of love and enjoyment when I can do something for somebody else. I, you know, I, I feel like my purpose is to help other people and, um, uh, you know, that includes myself. I mean, helping myself, you know, doing what I can do to improve myself, helping others. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I always joke around, like, you know, sometimes, like, being a creative person, I'm kind of a strange and weird guy. And I always <laughs> joke around with my friends. I'm like, you know, what's worse, me being like this? Or you know that I'm like this and you're still my friend. <laughs> you still my friend. Yeah, that's that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I would hope people would be happy and you know, and be able to rejoice and, you know, uh, and I, and I hope, you know, just make a ding in the universe somehow, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. one day somebody will be able to, you know, I, I you know, I, one day I hope somebody is like, you know what? I'm glad I knew that guy. So, yeah. Well, I'm saying yeah. that right now. I'm glad I know this guy. I, I can say that too. Man. You got two, you got 200% return yeah, on that. that. Y'all are great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm like, <laughs> I'm smiling ear to ear here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that you brought up a really important point, though, uh, when it came to kind of like the, the, the point of excellence, you know what I mean, for, for yourself. Like, you want to make sure that you're doing the best for you. Um, but, and that's the thing, you know, like, it's not it's, – it's, so, it's within your self-interest to be the best author that you can be. And as a result of that effort – you create value in this, in these things that people can enjoy and love and appreciate time and time again. Mm -hmm. So your pursuit of, of bettering yourself, while it may seem selfish in the moment, maybe to other people that if you're spending time in writers retreats or, you know, whatever the case may be. And, uh, but I mean, it's to the benefit of so many other people. And that's pretty much the case for, for especially the arts, but really almost any profession that exists. I saw um, something today. Corey was an awful, awful photographer. You well, know, like, I saw okay, something cool, today. I want to share this with you. Talking about that same thing. Um, it is by Lao Tzu. If you want to awaken all of humanity, then awaken all of yourself. If you want oh, to eliminate wow. the suffering in the world, then eliminate all that is dark and negative in yourself. Truly, the greatest gift that you have to give is your own self transformation. Lao Tzu. That's beautiful. I literally, I can't even, what do we do after that? <laughs> I'm just saying, man, like, you know, like, I think it's kind of like one of those things, um, a long time ago, I was thinking about my marriage and my wife and, you know, thinking about how 
I could you know help my wife and do better for her and, and give back to her more. And the thing is, is that if a person is empty, right, and they have you know they can't even fill themselves up, how are they expected to give to somebody else? And I think mothers, and I want to I want to circle back to uh, Mother's Day here. So I love all the mothers. They give selfishly, you know they they give and give and give. And, you know, so my job as a husband is to try to fill my wife up, you know, with love and care and good things and my children the same way and my friends, my family and things like that the same way, uh, trying to give and it fills me up, you know, by doing for other people, by, you know, committing service and servant leadership to others. It makes me feel, you know, whole, it makes me feel good, you know, and it, it also creates all these opportunities, like, you know, being able to be friends with folks like yourself and, you know, uh, we got Bill Cooper coming in, you know, a guy like him and Chad Carvel. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it, it, it's just one of those things. I, I appreciate y'all. So, uh, we got we got like three minutes left, Matt. What uh, what else you want to hit on real quick? What are, what's what's next? How do, what are you guys uh, what are you guys up to this week with uh, with Corona? Uh, I'm up to going back to work. Full time instead of yeah. Home. yeah, yeah. No, and I should theoretically, I'd be going back with you, but I was thankfully I was released by the unit. Something the army does a phenomenal job of these days is hooking us up with these things called career skills programs, and that's what's allowed me to enter this internship with this private company. And so, nice. I'm getting the hands-on training and experience, and that's been amazing. Yeah, I'm, man, I'm looking. You out there, man. I know, I know. I miss a lot of the people over there, and I, I, I look forward to. To making my my guest appearances from time to time <laughs> before I'm done. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm in the same boat. Um, I'm just looking to try to, uh, you know, keep moving forward. And uh, whenever they do call me back, uh, you know, be ready, be ready to to go back to work, and you know, just continue to to work and do the do the you, things that we do. You know. <laughs> what uh, are are you? What are you writing right now? Uh, I'm almost finished with a short story uh, for the anthology, and I'm working on editing for that story for uh, Rachel Brune and Corn Girls Press. I've, awesome. I've got um, a new series that I'm working out the uh, project management side of it. I'm just you know planning on it, you know doing the planning stages, but that'll be mm-hmm. the next thing. So yeah, it's it's one of those things, and I I got to do a I got a poetry. Oh yeah, this is one I want to drop the bombshell on. Um, do it. Corey, uh, talking about Corey Brooks and his awesome photography, um, I've been working on a new poetry book. And, like, I saw this picture that Corey posted online, and I was like, oh, that's perfect for my book. <laughs> that's, what, that's, like, the whole theme, like, of, of what I've been, you know, working on. And so I, I said, hey, Corey, I said, you know, can I license your, your photo for the book? And he was like, yeah, man. And it was done. I was like, what? This is amazing. So look forward to, yeah, look forward to that next poetry book. It's going to have um, a beautiful photo by none other than the great Corey Brooks and his photography works. That's phenomenal. Hope the photo draws people in. That's for sure. Oh, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. So. <laughs> Well, um, everybody, thank you so much. Thanks, Matt, for hosting the second hour, man. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. And uh, thanks, Always Corey, Corey, for being on the show. And uh, this has been a <laughs> lot of fun. So we're, we're going to have to do this again. This is like not the only time we're ever going to do this. So we're going to have to do this again. <laughs> Maybe a couple of months we'll check back in and we'll do, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what everybody's up to and all. So. Thanks for having me on the show. I enjoy being on the show, and I appreciate this. Yeah. And uh, one final time, y'all, this is my last chance to say it, but I just want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. I hope you are having a wonderful um, time, and uh, we love all y'all moms out there. And thank you from the bottom of our hearts of uh, everything that you do every day, all the sacrifices that you make and the love that you give us, because, you know, you fill us up with that love, and, and we love you in return. So thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day, y'all. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, y'all. Thanks. Later, guys. Bye. You are listening to WRUU.